righty, folks, I think I'll go ahead and get started. It is 10 o'clock on the dot. I want to go ahead and say thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, appreciate you guys for uh, jumping on today for our monthly webinar. It is June. This is month number six of us hosting this uh, monthly call. My name is Philip Graves from Headlight. Uh, I'll be your host on today, as well as my co-host, uh, Les Fletcher from E-Construction of LADOTD. He's on as well. Uh, Les, you want to go ahead and say anything? Just saying good morning. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we, you know, we enjoy doing this webinar. We hope it's been helpful for you. Um, hope you brought your questions. So if you have anything that you need us to answer, this is a great time for that as we're about to jump into the QA here in just a minute. So uh, look forward to it. Thanks, Phil. Awesome. Thanks, Les. Uh, for starters, I want to go ahead and say I want to be mindful of everybody's time. I know I do. Uh, once again, I do appreciate you guys. I see a lot of folks who are in trucks. That means that we have a lot of work going on across the state, which is always good to see. And uh, hopefully that our demonstrations today allow for you guys to ex, uh, expand on that work uh, by some of the tools and things that we're going to go over. Uh, for starters, as we always do, we like to have this round table where uh, any and every question is um, asked of you guys or encouraged of you guys to bring to us uh, while it's top of the mind. So I want to go ahead and open that up uh, right now for you guys that if there's anything that you have that's fresh on your mind or you're thinking about that you want to mention, that could be within field book, that could be within materials, that can also be within sample plan. Um, go ahead and ask that question and we'll try our best to, uh, ability to be able to answer that for you uh, with the first 10 minutes. So um, without further ado, if you guys have anything that you brought to this meeting today that you wanted to get answered, feel free to go ahead and drop it in the chat or ask out loud. No questions. Did anybody learn anything new as far as our software uh, since the last meeting? Did they try anything new? Was there any adjustments that you might have noticed. We're always changing things. So I just want to see if you guys are on top of your game to find out some of those changes or come across those changes. Anything that you guys noticed that might have been different uh, while building sample plans or anything like that. Okay, we have a question in the chat. For the drone view, is it owned by Headlight or a third party? All righty. Um, so I'm assuming you've seen uh, some drone images or something like that. Is that what you're asking, Sean? Or if you don't mind, you can come off mute and, and ask that uh, out loud. Oh, okay. All right. So yes. So I'm assuming he must have saw some drone images. Uh, more than likely, have you seen drone images inside of our software that came directly from a specific user or they might have got involved uh, your group, which would be the um, the uh, pilot team over there at LADOTD that might have created those drone photos, and then they gave it to a specific user to have added into the project. Les, do you want to talk more about that? Are you familiar with any of those projects that they might be working on? I don't know exactly which project Sean is talking about, but um, Philip, you pretty much said it. So we have a you know a section here at headquarters that has drones, and I have heard it's, it's actually a good topic we can bring up. I've heard that they are ready and willing to come fly projects. So um, if you guys want to contact them, if you would like to get some overview shots of your projects, they will set that up. Of course, you know it's definitely weather related. Uh, you got to have a nice unwindy clear day to fly a drone on a project but um yeah so that, that, that would be great they have flown a few um projects some of the bigger projects for uh i guess some of the pe offices lately or maybe even some consultants and uh you know we've uploaded a little, little bit of that uh drone footage to headlight so yeah yep well, thank you for that question, Sean. And um, I do think that as we continue to build off of that, we're going to get more and more drone footage um, without, <laughs> I think that 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 area is growing uh, fastly. Uh, so I can see that more and more as we start to pick up on things as far as e-technology is concerned. So great question. I, I would like to bring up 
just right quick, um, and Patrick mentioned something about it in the comments here, is that you know we are in discussions with using some of FHWA state funding to start integrating some of those technologies into our projects. And I'll be honest with you, when I first came to headquarters, which is almost three and a half years, I guess it's been three and a half years since I've been up here. So I've been working on my drone pilot's license, but it just got pushed to the back of my priority list because we have so much other stuff going on. But I do want to mention that you have to have a, to fly a drone on a DOTD project, you have to have part 107 license. So don't, if you have a personal drone, don't just pull it out and go fly it on a project because that is not legal. Oh, but uh, yeah, if you just contact the right personnel here, I think our, is it our survey group maybe that has the drone, um, but we do also have an aviation section. I know that they have one. So. I uh, just want to bring that up. But yeah, we actually have a meeting this afternoon with the company that does stationary cameras. So basically, there's a company that they'll just come put cameras up and it pretty much records the whole job for you. Um, so trying to use some of that uh, extra funding that we can get in the e-construction related uh, areas. So. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick, uh, for dropping that in the chat uh, to give people a little bit more insight as what's going on on the back on uh, the back end of things uh, and what's already in the works. Any other questions that we have out there? Kevin, you're trying to get them out on one of your projects. <laughs> uh, not at this moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I did see something. There's a couple things in the chat, um, Bill. So one of them, Brandon. Yes, we can. Uh, we'll send out some email. I'll try to find out who exactly to contact about the drone stuff, but we could send that out to you guys. Um, and then there's another question here, and it looks like somebody from the lab about the wireless access. So are you saying that you do not have wireless internet in your lab, Travis? Okay. I've heard this from a couple of people, and it's really hard for me to believe that our labs do not have wireless access at all. So um, step one, I believe that someone from each lab needs to submit a ticket to OTS stating that you need wireless access. Um, I will work I'll work on that from my end as well because you know although it's not, fully functional right now, the labs will 100% need wireless here before too long because we're, we're moving that way. Okay, so the wires are ran with no device. The OTS is in the um, process of upgrading all of the wireless access points for the PE offices, but they may be unaware that the labs even need wireless access. So uh, this is really great that you were bringing this up. I see Amanda saying District 62 doesn't have it either. So yeah. Um, we will work on our end to make it a point that that stuff has to be um, upgraded. So th there actually might even be another route we could take as an interim. So I'll check in on that as well. Okay. Um, another question, I guess, from, from a headlight standpoint, those iPads that you're working on, is it struggling to give you cellular data uh, while you're in the lab uh, as a backup? because you should have a cellular connection on those devices. So if you're able to use your phones inside the lab, then you should be good. I've noticed with our PE offices, a lot of them are metal buildings. And so the, the cellular doesn't work well inside of them. Or is your lab a metal building, Travis? What? what? Concrete. Concrete, yeah. Because he said, well, he's saying they don't have access like construction. You guys, the iPads, you should get, correct me if I'm wrong, Les, they should have all connection um, available. So sell your connection. So that's why I asked if you're able to use your phone in that lab um, and it works pretty, pretty well, or are you able to surf the internet on your phone or anything like that? You should be able to use the cellular data in the lab to be able to operate that iPad. If not, you can go ahead and send me over your specific device numbers and I can check on that on our end to be able to help out while we figure out the Wi-Fi situation. Uh, 
but thank you, Travis, for mentioning that to us. It looks like we have what two two districts for sure, um, but we probably need to survey and find out from other districts if they're experiencing this as well. Uh, so thank you for bringing that up. Any other questions that we have out there from anybody else? Bill, let me just make a comment on that. Um, and I don't know if this is the case. I know when I was still working in District 02, when Wi-Fi was first getting set up um, at this that district and also at 61 and at 62, that the Wi-Fi routers were only set up like in the main building. And I think that's it. Okay. That makes a lot of sense, Kevin. That That probably clears up why a lot of the labs don't have it. I always, I, assume, really, I always assumed yeah. that they did because the main building had it. No, if anything, when I was still in O2, I know when they first set up all Wi-Fi at the different offices at the Bridge City um, uh, district headquarters, they only set it up in the main building and not in the lab. And I know I ran into the same situation at District 61 when I was there. And also now, of course, District 62 is facing that. Okay. So, so in District 02, they have it in the lab, but it's only like in the back of the lab. It doesn't, you, when, if you walk to the front of the lab where, where the engineer's at and everything, the signal gets very weak and then it disconnects and you have to use the cellular. Okay. Appreciate that, Kevin. I also, I also want to bring up uh, Hamid just put a comment in there about the connection in rural areas. In fact, I, I I brought that up in the newsletter, and it's something that we so recently headquarters, headquarters construction recently uh, finished up the first round of meetings with the area engineers and project engineers, and we heard this several times. And so we are kind of putting it on the forefront of what we're doing here, trying to get um some of that cleared up hey maria um, mute your mic. maria would could you mute for me please thank you so um we i have been working with ots to get hotspots to temporarily help while they are upgrading wi-fi and potentially even use that on a project I have gotten a couple of the Verizon units, but we have not, they are working on the contract with AT&T right now. So I will start deploying those pretty soon to try to help with that. Um, I'm gonna start with rural areas first because those seem to be the ones that are having the most trouble. Um, we're even looking into some services that we could um, pro provide through the contract where there would be uh, internet provided on the um, project by the contractor and so you know although that that won't happen quickly you, you will start to see that uh, popping up in your contracts thanks les um anybody else have any questions before we kind of move on to the next section which will be our demonstrations for the day so everybody's good pretty much all right. So today we have two great topics uh, that we're going to actually discuss. Um, the first one will be uh, for me in regards to some of the features that you can use on the iPad. Uh, constantly throughout uh, my tenure with Headlight, uh, some of the main questions have been, Phil, how do I multitask? How do I open up uh, certain plans and documents to be able to see it and also be able to be in Headlight? You know, some people who are familiar with um, Apple devices have come across, Phil, can I do split screen with Philbook and let's just say, you know, Citrix or anything like that to whereas I can look at both of those at the same time. Well, I want to let you guys know that there are ways to do that. Okay. Um, we don't offer the full functionality of split view, but there's what they call split over screen. Okay. And that split over screen allows you to do some of that functionality like you guys um, have kind of discussed our ways to multitask. So on today, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to be able to pull the split over screen, which allows for you to be able to look at like your OneDrive or to be able to look at some photos that you might have saved of like a plan or something like that. 
Uh, it'll also allow you to pull up Adobe at the same time while you're still in Fieldbook. So I'll show you guys how to use that. Another thing that comes up constantly is, well, Philip, I need to be able to jot down notes or take quick little notes to be able to save where there's what they call a quick note section inside of the iPad that's almost like a sticky pad or you know, one of those little small um, binders that you, I mean, uh, notebooks that you might have to put in your back pocket where you can be able to take notes, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to use both of those functionalities on today on your iPad to limit your pen and paper process, as well as allowing you guys to save a little time to go in, in between screens or having to uh, capture a quick photo and then save that and then try to go back and forth to refer to when you're looking at plans or you're looking at line items uh, specifically uh, while working inside a field book, okay? So let me go ahead and share my screen. If I can just get somebody to confirm that they are able to see my screen, we're good to go. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay. So what I have here right here is just in Fieldbook, right? I am working inside of Fieldbook. Um, let's just say I'm starting my day and I want to go ahead and take a few observations or before I make my narrative for the day with any kind of information, I want to go ahead and review a few plans that I might already have saved on my device. So. I will basically come in here and I'm just gonna create a general narrative, just like I would start off, just saying this would be my general remarks. I'll go to the title, change it out. General remarks. Then I'll come into the body and I'm just gonna say, um, demonstration on how to use slide over. So now I have this in here and I'm at the point where I say, hey, I need to go back and I need to reference either a photo or I need to reference a PDF that I want to use to capture while I'm looking inside of Headlight Field Book. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to pinch in my screen and then I'll go ahead and drop it down. But what I'm going to also do is come over here to let's just say I'm using photos. I'll go ahead and hold that, open it up. And you see right here at the top, there's those three little bars in the middle of my screen at the top of my screen, okay? When I tap on those three little dots that you see, not bars, I'm sorry, three little dots, you see where it says split view, slide over, okay? What I would do is I would just hit slide over, now that that's open, I can open back up Fieldbook. And you notice that that screen is right there for me to use slide over, okay? I can see all my photos. I can reference a photo that I want to use. Um, and then also, I can use that to be able to continue on with my notes section. So this screen can actually slide from side to side while I'm still able to use Fieldbook. So right now, it would be very hard for me to continue typing here because I need to get to my keyboard. I can just take this and slide it over to the other side. I can even push this all the way out the way by just going to the right. I'll just push to the right. And now my slide over screen is over there and it to the right and I can actually still use my keyboard, okay? So for example, I looked at the photo. I can just put in a note, something quick as, you know, exactly the bent or anything that I was looking at in the photo. And then I can always go back by grabbing on the outside on the right to open that back, that slide over back up. Okay. And then that brings it back on my screen where I'm able to view. Okay. So I know I kind of went through that pretty quickly, but I'll go over it just again. If I ever need to, I can open up as uh, that slide over screen by going to the area or the app that I want to use and pressing the three dots at the top, and I want to select slide over. It'll make that screen available to me as a slide over while I'm still inside a field book. So let's go ahead and show, I'll show you guys how to close it. So just the same way that you can close a screen, you can just slide up and throw it away. 
I can grab that screen and slide it up and close it like I just did and tossing it up. That goes, that throws that uh, slide over screen out the way. And now I just have field book open. So I'll do it once again. I'll go ahead and take all five fingers, put it on the screen, or you can double click on the home button to get the same action. And what happens is it puts all of the open apps on your iPad available for you to either toss up in the air to get rid of or to be able to switch between those two, okay? Now that I'm out of there, I've basically closed that out. I can go to Photos or any other app that has the three dots at the top. I'll tap on those three dots that you see right above Years. And you'll notice it says full screen, split view, or slide over, okay? I'll hit slide over. Now that slide over screen is available, I can then open back field book, and now I see everything that I need to in regards to the slide over screen, okay? Hopefully this is able to help you guys. I know sometimes that you want to be able to do this to be able to see uh, specific details like plans, line items, um, it could be even a CD that you want to reference to uh, or a CC that you want to reference to that you might have got from a contractor or a note or something like that. You can do so by being able to use the slide over. Any questions in regards to the slide over before I actually go into how to use a quick note or how to use um, what I like to call sticky notes on the iPad? Everybody good? All right, well, I'll go ahead and show you guys this. Remember, this is recorded. So if you need to go back or if you were trying to watch as I go through and then also do it on your own, feel free to uh, look at this recording once again to be able to see exactly how I was able to pull up the slide over screen, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and I'll show you guys how easy it is to pull up the quick notes or to be able to take notes. On the latest update of Apple, they made it to where Quick Notes is at the bottom right corner of your screen. So at the bottom right of your screen, if you just slide to the middle, you will notice that the notepad comes up for you to be able to take notes, almost like a little quick sticky note or a quick note that you can punch in. These notes are then taken right here and then saved inside of your notes app that's already pre-programmed on your iPad, okay? You can kind of go in there and reference anything. Uh, if you're out in the field and you want to just jot down something that you need to remember from a phone call or anything like that, you can always use this section to be able to take notes, all right? And they will be saved to your device that you can follow up on later. Um, also, something cool about notes that some might not know, you can attach photos inside of the notes section on your iPad, okay? If you need to reference to something or something that you took with the, uh, with the iPad, and it's not tied to a DWR, you can always add those photos to a note and be able to jot down as well, okay? So I'll show you guys once again how I was able to pull that up before I pass it over to Les to do his demonstration on today as well. So I'm gonna hit done. I'm gonna take my finger from the right corner at the bottom to the towards the middle, and you'll see the quick notes actually come up. Just slide your finger from the right bottom corner to the middle, and you'll see the notes section pop up. So hopefully these two pieces actually help you guys. Um, like I said, it's con constantly asked, Phil, how do we multitask? How, do we, how are we able to look at different applications that we might need that houses information for us and be able to input that information without taking a lot of time or clicking between apps? Uh, also. How do I take notes on my iPad really quickly when I need to, as opposed to me having to pull out pen and paper, being that you guys say I don't really need to when I have this device in my hand. So these were two tools that I think will be very beneficial to you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the chat. But without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it to Les to be able to give his demonstration on today. Thanks, Philip. I want to say um, that that is really great. I used to use that when I was in the field pretty much every day. I would uh, open up my plans in Adobe 
and also open up the spec book in Adobe and I would kind of slide them over to the side like Phil had it. And it was just a quick reference. I didn't have to close out a field book to get to those documents really quick. So it was always a great multitasking tool. Were there any questions on what Phil demonstrated before we move on? I'm gonna make sure. Let's see. All right. So I'm gonna share my screen. One of the things I wanted to show you today um, deals with reports and syncing reports and even some errors with reports. Uh, second here. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Somebody give me a thumbs up or good? All right. So um, I, I recently had a, a couple of support questions come in about this. It's a little rare, but I, I, I know that Headlight made a change on this probably about a year ago um, that we were discussing it. And so I wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of it because um, I know that one of the pain points of this is the sync between Headlight and Site Manager. Um, especially when it deals with reports and particularly when the report includes a work item. And so I know that a lot of you have seen this before. So I'm in our test project today and this is the reports tab. Um, and you, you, you've seen this rejected status and failed to sync the site man manager and you, it probably gave you a headache. So I know I've been there before. Um, it's just something we have to go through until we can get the uh, system of record moved over to Headlight instead of Site Manager. You've probably seen this one as well, uh, where it says rejected and changes required. This one is not too bad. So this, what happens here is uh, you submit your report, and I submitted this, you know, submitted and uh, kind of reviewed it as the office reviewer um, a while back. And so I, I want to bring up something when you when you have a report and it's in a rejected status or something you have to work on. One important tab that I'm not sure that a lot of people use often enough is the history tab. So this gives you a lot of information about what is going on with your report. You can see here on the history tab, I created it. It gives you a date and timestamp. It gives you the date and timestamp of when I submit it. And this is me actually as a um, reviewer, you know, I, I know it's the same login, but I actually reviewed my own report here. Um, it gave a stamp of when I rejected this and I added a comment here. So as a reviewer, if you're a PE or a Tech 7 and you're reviewing uh, reports for your inspectors, you can go in and add any kind of comment here to let them know what may be wrong with their report. And there are several reasons you could reject the report. One of them being, uh, like I added here, please add the tags for the work items. I, you know, I did not go through and add all the pertinent information needed um, for, for the work item I added here. But it could also be, hey, I need some more images of this. Or, you know, if, if you have a video of this slump test being ran, it would be great to put it in the report. Um, you know, as a reviewer, Feel free to, to send that kind of stuff. I, I know that it, it adds a step for the inspector to have to go back and do something. But, you know, one of the reasons we have moved the headlight is we really want some robust documentation on these projects. And so that is a great way to get the inspector uh, taking more images or videos or adding tests, whatever you want them to do. Uh, using this comment section, um, rejecting that report, saying, hey, I need a little bit more out of you. Um, so and I'll download the PDF here. This is another great tool. So the PDF um, is basically like a piece of paper of your report, and it does make it a little easier to view, uh, especially when you're reviewing reports. And so this is some basic stuff. You can see here I added a work item. I did not add my location or my stations or remarks or anything like that, and so that's why I rejected my own report, mostly for this demonstration. But um, another tool that Headlight is provided for us, and, and I hope most of you know about this, is the site manager validation tool. So, you know, the rejected reports, especially when we first rolled out Headlight uh, Fieldbook, was a majority of the support questions coming in. And so they added this tool, and this checks several things. The most common uh, report problems that we get, 
but it does not check everything. And so this is a great tool to use when you're reviewing reports, but just realize it is not comprehensive. It just catches the, the major stuff. Um, but obviously there was not a sync problem here. So, so my validation tool is good. So let's switch over to a different report. So I'm gonna go to my June 12th report here. And, and this is the one that starts to cause problems. When you have a fail to sync to site manager, please do not ignore this status. If you go in, if, if you review a report, inspector submits and you review a report and it gets a rejected status and says fail to sync to site manager, something is wrong and there is not enough information in site manager for a completed report. If you go into Site Manager and approve that report in Site Manager, this status disappears and it, it turns green and approved. And the reason it does that is because Site Manager is still a system of records. So Headlight assumes that if you've approved the DWR in Site Manager, that it's correct. So be careful of that overwritten status uh, showing approved here when there might be something wrong with it. When you get this failed sync to Site Manager, you should try to deal with it yourself. If it's something very simple, that's great, fix it and move on. But if you get stuck, if something that takes you more than probably 20 minutes to fix, your first thought should be, I need to send in a support request to get some help with this. Headlights very quick about giving you help on what may be wrong with that report. But let's dive into this. I wanted to show you these couple of things I've been seeing lately. So I have, a work item here. I actually have five work items in this report. I'll download the PDF so we can see it. Um, so you see I have a some striping here. And one of the things I was seeing is there have been some problems with the station numbers. So th this is what Headlight worked on for us a little while back. And you can see I have, a, I have one too many um, past the decimal over here. What they're looking for is no more than eight characters here, including the plus sign. Uh, so be careful of that. When it's in this format, it will still sync to Site Manager. It will just drop this last part over here. So it's not bad, but it will give you a problem with the two station characters. This station, this station has more than eight characters. Two station has more than eight characters. But the other problem here is uh, that I want to deal with is the location sequence number. Remember, and, and I know this might be a repeat or just a refresher for most of you. Most of us know, have figured this out uh, over the years of using Fieldbook, but it's always good to have a refresher on it. When you have multiple line items that are the same, so 9005 Class A concrete, these are exactly the same. If it was a different line item with Class A concrete, you don't have to do this under the same contractor. So if you had two separate contractors with one of these, that's fine as well. But when you have the same contractor, multiple work items that are exactly the same, you must add a location sequence number. And you can see I did not do that here. And that's why it gave me this uh, validation error because it was missing. Um, I went ahead and submitted the report because I wanted to show that it was rejected and kind of show you what happens with that rejection and how you can figure out what happened. Let me go back to the report. Um, again, using the history tells me a lot of information about what happened to my report. You can see that it tried to insert it inside manager and I get this, um, this error message that um, normal humans cannot read, right? So it does give you a few uh, little clues in here to what might have happened, um, work item, air seeking work item in the site manager. So that's usually what I would use. But I wanted to, to bring this up, something I've realized actually lately is that everything that does not sync to site manager, you get an error message for. So if you count these, I have one work item, two work items, three work items that did not sync. I have a total of five. So that means two items did sync over to site manager. And so you with that information, you can kind of figure out, looking through there, what you need to go back in the site manager and correct, right? And, and um, on the PDF, let me go back to the PDF. So I can see that since I didn't put my location sequence number in, what happened? It starts with the work item, the lowest number. So it's, it's sequential. So 9002 would go first. Um, 
And then it did not sync these three work items. This is where we got the error message because it automatically assumed the first location sequence number, right? Because it, it, you know, if you only have one item normally, it assumes that it's a one. So this work item went to the site manager and this work item went to the site manager, but these three failed. And so if you can kind of deduct what happened there, then you know, I need to go back in the site manager and make these three corrections and add those work items so that my estimate is not incorrect at the end of the month. Hopefully that makes some sense to you all, but um, I want to also show you another issue we've been having that deals with the station numbers. Um, it might be best to do the, I mean, we could probably look at it here. And so this rejected as well. And the reason it rejected is because of these station numbers here. So sometimes it's hard to know if you need to put the plus sign or not put the plus sign. So the answer is you always want to put a plus sign here. Headlight is looking for it. And so, um, Probably what you would be expecting here is 100 plus 05 instead of this. And so Headlight sees this, it allows four numbers. I think I get that, I think I'm getting that right. It allows four numbers to the left side of the plus and three to the right. And that would give you your eight characters. Your four, the plus sign of the character and three numbers to the right would give you the eight that it allows. So what happens here is it reads this as five numbers instead of four. In fact, if I look at the history, you can see actual five, maximum four. That's what that means. It means I actually put five numbers here where it was only expecting four. So it's, it's a simple little thing, but I just want to make sure that we all understand that the station numbers have to be formatted correctly here for those reports to go over to site manager correctly. So I think that's pretty much, I think I was going to show you in Site Manager what went over, but of course my session expired and there's no sense in going through that um, there. But you can use that deduction tool. What I always do when I, when I get a report that is rejected, um, the first thing I do is look at what's in the report and then I open up another screen and look at what's in Site Manager. And you can always find where the failure is. When you have a report, and I pulled up an example here, so, and this deals with the way Headlight syncs to Site Manager. So it starts line by line syncing stuff over once the report has been reviewed. It, it first starts with your temperatures and your AM, PM conditions. It then starts to sync line by line your Site Manager remarks. On general remarks, it will actually combine all of your um, descriptions for your images as well. But line by line, it goes through this. It's almost never a problem at this stage of the report. Um, it's usually when you get to the work item. So after all of that initial information is synced over, then line by line, it goes from the you know, sequential numbers of the work items. So it would start here with this class A. If you had a problem here, which this report does not have a problem, but let's say um, we didn't have the location sequence numbers here. here. It, it, has synced everything from headlight up to this point over to site manager. And then it starts to read this, it would sync the first one, right? But then when it got to the second one, if there was not a location sequence number here, the sync would, would stop at this point and none of this information here would go over, none of the contract personnel would go over and none of the equipment would go over. And so that becomes a problem if that, um, rejection is ignored and just approved in site manager, it becomes a problem when it comes to estimate time because then you're looking for these work items that are not in there and you're expecting them to be there, right? And so then you have to go back and, and try to clean up the reports. Now, we want the contract personnel and equipment that's in headlight to match site manager, but this is not as big of a deal, obviously, as the work items. The, the most important thing is getting the work items in the estimate. At least we have documentation of what was on the job if it's in headlight. Um, but the rejection dealing with work items is definitely something we have to take care of. So. All right, that's all I had, Phil. Were there any questions um, on that section?
I think we um, we had one question, um, and I'm actually uh, I responded to Amanda in regards to it. <clears throat> Her question was, "Is there a way to see those sync errors in materials too?" And I think that was a very good question, uh, a great question as well. Um, if we can find those out, I'm actually going to bring that back to my team to see if there's uh, a way to have that information available to you guys, because I can see how it would be beneficial to be able to know exactly what caused the uh, sync to not go through, or if it's a possibility, if that's what caused um, an error in the way the sample was created, if that caused it to fail um, and not pass. So <clears throat> I think we need to find out um, a little bit more about that and, you know, some use cases and some scenarios of where uh, that would uh, really help out. So thank you, Amanda, for that question. Yeah, that would be great, Phil. I do want to say it's a little more complicated on the material side. I, in fact, let's just be honest, everything with materials is a little more complicated. But the reason it's complicated in this instance is, yes, headlight could provide some form of error messaging if the sample did not sync within the allotted amount of time, which is usually five minutes, right? If, if the sample is in a logged state, that means that it went to site manager. So if it was left open, Headlight could probably give us some clues, hey, you might wanna go in and check this sample. But then there is another step that involves, especially if there's a form uh, attached, like a structural concrete form or soil moisture density form, when those are attached to the sample, Headlight does not deal with the sink side of it, we deal with that on our side through the page. And so it would be it would be much more difficult to get the error messaging into headlight from that stage. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little bit on both sides at this point. And that's one of the reasons why we are pushing and headlight is pushing to try to get the limbs module complete because it cleans up so much of that and makes it super simple. And then the reporting from headlight side would be much easier as well, right? Hey, you have a problem here, you need to go fix it. So, but but that's great and very observant that we need to have some kind of sync uh, messaging on the material side because it is a problem. I mean, that's I deal a lot with the material syncing myself. So I know where you're coming from. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I want to let everybody know, uh, kudos to last two on the newsletter. Have you guys seen it? Uh, it was revamped um, after our first six months, and he did an awesome job as far as getting that thing to where it needs to be. So make sure you guys check it out. It does have a lot of information to some of the people who are um, new to the newsletter or just starting to receive it. Uh, it's It's been revamped, and I, I really like it. So thank you, Les, for that. Um, now, I want to go ahead and pass it to eConstruction. We have a few others from eConstruction. Is there any news out there that you guys want to mention that you want to give? to everyone while they're on a call. Um, I believe we have Kevin, we have Donna, we have Patrick who's on if he didn't have to jump. Uh, and then we also have uh, a few others as well. I have one quick thing. Actually, one of the questions we got earlier and I, I can do an introduction here is Sean Clark. Sean, Sean is our uh, student worker that'll be here throughout the summer. He's helping out the e-construction team and. Uh, already diving in and he even did some review of that uh, e-construction newsletter and found a couple of my mistakes for me. So we appreciate that. And we uh, just want you guys to know if you see that name or anything coming from him that it's legit. He actually is working with us and uh, he might be sending you guys out some stuff. Awesome. Welcome to the team, Sean, man. Appreciate you for uh, joining the bunch. Uh, I can't wait to work with you closely uh, as you start to do more things around the office. So I definitely will uh, uh, love to meet you. Um, let's see. It looks like we have a few other questions. Um, Claudia's a presented question. Is there any work on trying to sync the pay items to the electronic spreadsheet we need to keep track of as well? That's a great question, Claudia. And it's something I've been wanting to happen for quite a while. We're, we're actually getting almost to the point, um, there would have to be a, an official decision made and, and kind of sent out out to everybody, but we're getting close to the point where we don't have to track work items in two separate places. Um, you know, we're getting to a point to where you can track um, everything in headlight and not have to have that spreadsheet fill book. Like I know 
a lot of people like to have two, and I agree with that. There's always good to have two different copies so that you can kind of double check. But we're working on some ways that you can actually do that through Fieldbook. And one of that, one of those ways, at least the idea I have, is every work item you do, you document it with a observation, and then you document it in the work item section. And that gives you your two things. And so that way you don't have to work in two separate places, right? You would always have that backup. One thing that would be great from the headlight side is if there was a way to tag specifically the work item that you would be taking an observation for, and that way it'd be a one-to-one -one and you wouldn't have to do some searching around. That may come later once we kind of move away from site manager, but um, yeah, that's a great question. I would love to be able to do away with that second source. But Kevin, you're, I, I see some expressions. Are you agreeing with me? Does that sound good to you? I'd like to hear from a PE about what you think about that. Um, that's long overdue yeah. because the field books previously go back to the old ST system before Site Manager. Right. And when Site Manager got implemented, guess what? Um, inspectors still had to keep handwritten diaries and still had to keep field books. And it's never been done away with. So this is long overdue. I'm glad to hear that. I, I agree. And uh, we need to push that a little more on our side. I know that it's come up in several meetings here, like staff meetings, and it just really hasn't been dealt with all the way through to completion, but it has come up. And, I, you know, I believe all of our leadership here is in favor of doing away with it now that we have a very robust system to track those quantities. You know, the, the problem is like, so if you have two things, which one is correct? Even if you have that backup to document, the most accurate way that you can document a work item is at the point of it being installed, putting it right in the headlight. And that's going to be our most accurate way to do it. So, uh, and Claudia, I'm, it sounds good. It sounds like you feel the same. Uh, so it sounds like we can begin to work on that. I need this feedback to bring to those people so I can convince them to make that decision. <laughs> See, a lot of people felt the same way too. They felt they still feel kind of like that with headlight a little bit. They're like, well, am I still going to have to record work items in two spaces like site manager? So if the idea is that headlight's supposed to be doing this uh, for me, then why are we still keeping field books? Why are we still keeping external um, spreadsheets? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I see that uh, there's a question here also about Excel app on the iPad. So yes and no. There is, you can download the Excel app to the iPad. The problem is, is we do not have individual Microsoft 360 logins for each user. We actually pay for the service um, as a department, but we don't have the individual logins to get the paid version. So this, I, I worked with uh, OTS for a while on this and really couldn't make any headway because they had to deal with Microsoft on trying to get that. And I think the meetings just really fell through where there was not a good way to get that done. I have recently heard of another possibility there. So hopefully we can move in that direction. It sounds like we may be all moving towards the Microsoft 360 model. And if we do, I think we'll be able to get Excel. Now, that being said, you can access Excel through Citrix. And so if you need instructions on that, I'll be happy to help you and provide some of that. And so you can get to it. Citrix is a little clunky on the iPad. It's not the most user-friendly, but it is possible. Ooh, and I definitely want to deal with, deal with this next one. So this is one of the things I'm actually looking forward to. And Phil has uh, responded to that uh, in the chat. We could provide you a space now, but especially once you start using the LIMS module that's being built, yes, one of the things we will have is a way to document everything through photos and kind of the same way we're doing stuff in the field. Yeah. Uh, I was just letting him know less that they can use the project itself, uh, which they have access to, to document um, those photos. So, for example, like he took, like Travis said, he took the photo. He can put that inside of the project for now um, and then be able to just put the information. Hey, you know, this is what happened with that one. Um, but like Les stated there at a later date, when we have limbs, there will be an official process 
um, that e-construction can kind of notify you guys of exactly how they want you to handle those specific scenarios. So just wanted to throw that out there that you do have access to that project to be able to document something specifically, just a store. Yeah, and I'll, I want to mention there, Phil, so there are two types of documentation within Fieldbook that we need to distinguish. And one is a observation that is included in a report and then an observation that is just in the project. So that, what you're saying, if there was a um, sample that was not made correctly or something like that, I feel like that could be uploaded to the project. That's fine. It's just not something we were included in the report. Mm -hmm. And so you, you just leave it in the project kind of as, as extra documentation on our side is the way I look at that kind of thing. Internal use only for that, that kind of documentation. And Claudia has another, uh, I think, a statement or question in regards to um, the electronic field book, Les. Um, yeah, so I, I uh, that's what I was saying just a minute ago about the electronic field book using Citrix. It's not very user friendly. I, I agree with you. So right now, it's just all we have um, to do that. Um, and then Josh has something kind of similar here where you could filter and email the function for yes actually now that you bring that up that is very possible can i how much time we got we got a few minutes let me show you just real quick what josh is talking about and how you could do that let me go to the test project journal everybody can see my screen yeah okay um so what what you're talking about there is when you enter your work items into headlights so or say this day I entered these uh, five work items on 612. If you select just those uh, five observations, if you come in here to search, I'm sorry, I think I have to actually go to the date. So if you use the search feature, go to 612, all right, it's going to filter to those five observations. Once you have the observations filtered, you see where it says download here? When you download this, it gives you a CSV file. Let me open it. I might be opening it on another screen here. Hold on, let me find out where I'm at. Sorry. And so you can see that it gives you an Excel spreadsheet. Basically, you could copy and paste this into your Excel spreadsheets, and it's going to match exactly what is in headlight. Now, I would probably go through and delete out some of these. Um, like, you don't need GPS. So you can obviously just delete these columns, you know, that kind of thing and clean it up a little bit. But yeah, that's actually possible to do right now. And, you know, you, you would you would be using um, two different things, but it would make it a little easier. So unless you can, uh, I was thinking about doing was you could uh, filter by the label for the life of the project. So if I wanted all my concrete. Yeah, absolutely. And, all, and then you and that's your sheet and you just and you just adjust your columns you don't like. Would that be an acceptable way to keep it? That way you don't have as many errors from inputting data twice. Yep, that, you're 100%. But, but again, that kind of goes back to, you know, if you're just copying what's in headline, do we really need two systems? And so the answer to that is no. And so yeah, we, exactly. We, but... we just need to work on getting that cleaned up to where we don't have to turn that in on our audits. Yeah, you know, because I get a lot of questions from inspectors and then, yep. and then trying to fix that little fat fingers, you know, with the sheets and not matching up. And that's a big headache sometimes. So. Yep, 100%. Appreciate Thank that, Josh. Thank you, guys. Lester? Lester? Yes. Uh, can you please show one more time how to download the, the spreadsheet data? Sure. Thank you. Oops. Tell you what, it sounds like we might need to do a quick little training video or something on this. So um, let me clear my filters. So you need to go into the, so, so I'm sorry, let me, let me start here. So I'm in the spreadsheets under work items. You go into the search and basically you're trying to filter to the work items you need. And so let's say you wanted to pull all your work items on the project project for this 9,005 Class A concrete. So you could do that. If you wanted just the ones from this day, you could do it through dates. But if you wanted all for the whole project, she would come to the label, type in 9,005, select that label, 
and it's going to filter down to 290 uh, observations that are in our test project of all of our Class A concrete uh, work item entries. So then again, in the search bar, you would come here to download, click it, and you see it's actually doing it and putting the CSV, which is a spreadsheet file um, down here in the bottom. Let's see if it'll open. And then you can open that. And this is all of the, anything that's been put into actually not just headlight, if anything syncs back from site manager, those work items are here as well. So at the top, let me, let me kind of clean this up a little bit so you can see. So these are my place quantities, uh, my units, your line items. So you, you can kind of play with this real quickly and clean this up to where it looks a little nicer, right? And you know, get rid of a couple of columns, and this could be your your field book spreadsheet, basically. Hopefully, that helps you, Claudia. And if not, this this is being recorded, and so it's going to go up on our YouTube page, so you can always come back here to see how I filtered to those uh, line items. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you, Les. I appreciate that. I think we have four minutes left uh, that we can kind of go over some updates. Um, I just want to let you guys know that uh, we do have our Q&A session that will be on uh, next week, next Tuesday. You guys are more than welcome to come. We can kind of dive into any of the scenarios that you have, or if you come across any questions from now until then that you guys want to mention, that Q&A session uh, is great for you guys to bring some of those scenarios so that way we can kind of try to solve for them, okay? Also, at the end of the month, the last Thursday of every month, we have the micro learning uh, tutorial uh, session that will happen. Uh, feel free to jump in there. That's only a 20 to 30 minute session that we dive into a specific subject where you guys can bring your iPads along and walk through those steps as we go through them on the micro learning session. Also, one piece of information that I wanna to give to you guys is, we will be around to districts four, five, seven, and eight, uh, 58, 61, and 62, as far as the iPad swap. Uh, we do have a list of those specifically. Some of those are um, one device in, in those districts, and we'll contact you directly, but we are swapping those out. I do plan on being in Minden uh, towards the end of the week. So Josh, coming to you, okay? Uh, you guys have some 2019 devices that we need to swap off with some new ones. So I will be out there in that area. Always a pleasure to uh, be with you guys. And I believe Les is also making some runs as well uh, in regards to the iPad swap. So uh, those are some of the things that we have going on. Look to see some of you guys um, and still a little time from you guys as far as like giving some feedback and stuff like that. So look forward to seeing you. Uh, but that's pretty much all we have on our side from a headlight standpoint. Uh, I'll pass it back over to Les to give any last words or e-construction to give any last words, as well as if Patrick wants to say anything uh, with the last two minutes that we have. I'm good to go. I think we got to cover a couple extra topics here at the end that were very helpful. So I appreciate everybody's time. Anybody else from e-construction have anything to say? It's not. Gotcha. All righty. Well, once again, appreciate you guys for your time on today. I thank everybody for coming by um, and taking the time out. Like I said before, I know some people were taking this call in their vehicles, and that just shows you guys that you are interested in learning some of these new things that we have out here and get more information to give the best that you can on your end. And we thank you for that. Um, it doesn't go without notice. So thank you guys. Hopefully see you guys on next week. Everybody have a nice and wonderful day. Take care. Thanks, everyone.